I want to thank all of the students for with the SNDA for joining us tonight. Um, I have an amazing, amazing doctor on with me today. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself in a second. Um, I see that the students are still rolling in um, as we speak. So we're going to go ahead and start in, I want to say, let's give it maybe 30 seconds. Um, I, I know we, we have a lot of students that signed up to this event tonight. Um, so I want to give them an opportunity to um, get in as, in time for um, Dr. Shah to introduce herself and kind of tell her story a little bit. Um, again, I want to thank all of the students of the SNDA for joining. Really, really excited for this session um, as we wind down um, your semester. I, I know that we are in December and I know like you guys are going crazy with boards and with exams and everything that goes on. Um, life in a dental student. So I just, I just want to thank you all again for joining um, and thank you again, Dr. Dr. Shah. So we're gonna join, we're gonna, we're gonna begin in a couple seconds here. See, it looks like we do have more students coming in by the second. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself. So thank you students. My name is Miles Murphy. I am the Academic and Industry Relations Manager for Aspen Dental Management. Um, I oversee District 3, which is DC, PA, and the Maryland area, um, and all the dental schools that are affiliated um, with, with those states. And I work for Aspen Dental Management. So we are the built-in support organization that supports um, our 800 offices nationwide. And Dr. Shah, she can testament to that, um, how we give that support to our owners and our partners um, from a marketing standpoint from a operations from a business um, from a finance from a real estate everything that kind of goes into being that back that backbone to our owners um, and and to our partners and just kind of taking the load off of them when it comes from when it comes to being um, their business partner and their built-in consultant um, so that's pretty much what I do um, I want to make sure dr. Shot is able to introduce herself um, I want to open up the floor to her. Um, thank you again. I know that you're a really, really busy woman. You just had a baby. Congratulations. Um, you are, as you guys can see, she is still at work tonight. Um, so she's taken out an hour of her day to kind of um, tell her story and give her experiences at, at Aspen Dental and in dental school and kind of put herself back to when she was in your shoes. Um, so she's going to kind of speak about that as well. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna open up the floor to Dr. Shah and thank you again. And you could go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Miles. So hey there, my name is Melissa Shah. I am a 2014 graduate of the Rutgers School of Dental Medicine. Um, after I graduated, I did a one year general practice residency, which I finished in 2015. Um, originally, I was signed up to do um, some part-time private practice jobs up in New Jersey, but then my husband decided to move to Atlanta for um, a job opportunity. So I decided I would come with him. Um, unfortunately, the board exam that I took in New Jersey, uh, which is accepted in so many states, was not accepted in Georgia, So, which is where he was moving to. So um, I decided that I would work in Alabama, which is you know at a practice right across the border until I could get my Georgia license. Um, so the opportunity I found happened to be with Aspen Dental, which um, was definitely the furthest thing from my mind that I was planning on doing upon graduation of dental school and residency. There was never did I think I was going to be working um, for a DSO. So, um, you know, but I said, all right, well, we're just going to try it out. I need to kind of figure something out since this move is unexpected. So I joined Aspen um, in 2015 and um, Though I thought I was only going to be here for about six months, kind of work on my hand skills and get out of here. Um, five years later, I am still here. Um, I started off as a managing clinical director of the practice, and I'm now a partner in two practices, one in Alabama and one in Georgia. That's awesome. Thank you, Dr. Shaw, for introducing yourself and giving us a brief synopsis on, on your story. Um, it's been a half a decade. We're, we're so happy to have you. And we're happy that you stayed with us. Um, and that kind of transitions to our first question. Um, this is a, a question that I love asking all of our doctors. Why did you choose Aspen Dental? Like, I, I know that you said you didn't really have plans um, to join a DSO. You, you wanted to maybe get in, you know, get some kind of experience, work on your hand skills a little bit, and then get out. So 
five years later, half a decade later, why did you just, why did you decide to choose us if we, if we kind of, kind of take a step back when you were in dental school? Sure. So, um, in New Jersey, they don't have very many DSOs, if at all, when I graduated. So joining some place like Aspen was off the table because I was planning on staying in New Jersey. Um, also in dental school and residency, I don't know if this is everyone's experience, but a lot of the professors and a lot of the attendings will always say like, no, like, man, you cannot do DSOs, like don't do that. Uh, you know, they're gonna tell you how to treatment plan, you have quotas that you have to fill. And you kind of hear all these horror stories. So given that I have no experience in the dental world as a recent graduate, I'm kind of taking what they say um, as the truth. And I'm like, all right, well, then I guess I can't do a DSO. I'll have to find a private practice job or whatever the case might be. So really, me joining Aspen was purely out of the need to find a job. And this was the only thing that happened to be available right across the border. And I needed something close to Atlanta. Um, but in a state that accepted my board exam. So initially, the reason I joined was strictly because I needed the job. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, it's asking no, I can't wait. It was like, oh, God, shoot, I need a job because my husband decided to move last minute. It was only when I got here that I was like, wow, this is completely different than I expected. So going into it, having heard all these horror stories, I said, you know what, I'm going to stay here, like I said, six months, work on my hand skills, you know, and I'll just look for a private practice job in the meantime while I'm there. You know, if I don't like it, not a big deal. I'm going to chalk it up to an experience and I'll get at it. Then I started and I was like, wow, this is so much different than I expected. And, you know, I figured as much because they have so many dentists who work at Aspen Hill. So clearly the model works for certain people. It just depends on if you're one of those people. So um, one of the things I really liked about it, which was a big driving force as to why I stayed is because of the amount of experience you get. You know, when I graduated dental school and residency, it's not like, you know, I thought I knew everything. There was so much for me to learn. And with Aspen, because of the patients that we're seeing, you are just exposed to so many different procedures, um, so many different types of mouths, and you get to work on it. It's not like, oh, you're the new dentist, so you'll do the hygiene or you'll just do the recall exams, whereas you know, the head dentist gets to do all the cool procedures. You're, you're the one being thrown into it, doing it all. Um, and that could be scary for some people because maybe you don't want to be thrown into things and you're like, I just graduated. I don't know how to do this stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to be doing it, but there's always going to be mentors um, available to help guide you through it. So it was because of all the stuff that I was exposed to, all the learning, um, the huge network of people that you can rely on. Those are the reasons that made me stay. So it might not have been the reason I joined initially, but when I got to working and I learned all that I could, that's what, um, you know, were the driving forces behind me staying. Great, thank you, doctor. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I hear from a lot of students about like the perception, right? Like the perception is the key word there. And that's like the point that I wanna kind of drive home here a little bit. Um, and that's this is why we're, we're doing this tonight, right? To kind of give the students um, exposure to a real life Aspen um, dental doctor and to kind of tell her story that, hey, like I joined and it was not what I thought it was, or this is what I thought it was. And I'm here now five years later. So um, that, that's great that you, you shared that. And I kind of want to transition to um, the next question here. We got, we got a question that came in regarding mentorship. And this is also something that is super, super important um, when it comes to students at every level, right? From a D1 to a D4, they all want mentorship when they graduate, at the, at the time when they graduate. Um, so what did your mentorship look like at Aspen Dental? Um, was it what you thought it was? Um, was it better? Um, what, what, what did that look like for you, doctor? Um, great question. Yeah, I think that's really important because I, I don't feel that, you know, there are very many people who graduate dental school saying, hey, I know everything. I don't need any help. You know, there's always stuff that you need to learn and you need to be able to rely on people. And I think that's the one of the biggest pros about asking is that there's just such a huge network of doctors that you can lean on. So in my experience, the um, doctor with whom I partner, she was kind of my mentor. If I had questions, she was just a text away, a call away, and she was always available. I was, I never felt isolated where I was like, oh my God, I'm by myself. Like, I'm not sure what to do. I could always call her, I could always text her. 
the oral surgeon day one was like, here's my cell phone number. You have a question. You need a technique on how to get out a tooth or you're seeing something on the x-ray that you're not quite sure about. Just text me and I'll take care of it. If I were in a different setting, I might not be privy to someone's personal cell phone number to text them on the go in the middle of the day and be like, bro, if you like, look at this, I have no clue what this is. You know, and, and that's kind of the relationship that people have here. It's everyone's really wanting to help each other out. And because you have all these dentists, it's kind of like a, a built-in family that you have that you can that you can lean on. And even at the um, management level, you know, I had a couple of questions about um, the cost of my crown. So I sat there one day and went through a spreadsheet looking at all the costs. And I remember one day I talked to the head of the crown bridge part and he was like, Dr. Shaw, why did you do that? That's what we're here for. Like, you just shoot me an email. And I'll take care of all that stuff for you. So whether it's mentorship from a clinical aspect or an administrative aspect, there's always someone available to help you out, which I think is huge because it takes a lot of pressure off and you can just kind of focus on learning. Great. Thank you, doctor. And, and that, that's awesome that you mentioned that um, because we do offer that full range of support, right? Like we don't kind of just throw you into the fire. You know, we, we have that, we're, we, are, we do play like that backbone um, for all of our doctors at all levels, right? From like, you know, when you come in as an associate, we give you that support. You transition to an MCD, we give you that support. You become an owner, you become a partner, we give you that support as well. Um, so I, I, I do like that you mentioned that. And I also like that you mentioned that you can focus solely on dentistry, right? You can come in and, you know, learn as much as you can from a dentistry standpoint. And that's pretty much what you, what you went to school for, what all the students on the call on this call went to went to school for was to focus solely on dentistry, right? And it, it's it's an additional plus that you come in, you focus on dentistry, you learn about dentistry, and then you can also learn about the management side of it, like you like you mentioned. Um, so thank you for providing us with that insight, doctor. Um, so I want to do ask you I want to ask you this question. It, this is a question that came in from one of our students um, that submitted a question beforehand um, regarding your career path. Um, what did that look like? Um, you, you, you started off out, out of dental school and um, you started with us and five years later, you are here now, right? Um, so you are a partner. How did that come about? What made you wanna become a partner with us? If you can kind of dive into a little bit about that, that'll be great. Sure. So when you graduate, you'll either start off as an associate or you'll start off as a managing clinical director. Um, and it really just kind of depends on your experience, your comfort level, uh, what position is available in the office you're looking to, um, to work out of. So I started as a managing clinical director. I was, for the most part, by myself, but a couple of days a week in the beginning, um, the partner with whom I work she would come in and help me out. And therefore I had someone to kind of just lean on and talk to and guide me through things. Um, so that was in 2015 in October when I started. And then a couple of years later, she and I were talking and I was, you know, kind of debating. I was like, Hey, am I going to be moving to Atlanta where my husband lives or kind of like, what, what are we planning on doing? And, um, she said, you know, cause at this point I had taken my Georgia board exam. So I could have moved to Atlanta had I, had I wanted to. Um, and she brought it up to me and said, hey, you know what, I really enjoy working with you, you know, and she and I get along really well. She said, what would you think about going in on a couple of practices with me? And so, you know, I talked about it with my husband, our plan, like I said, was always to move to Atlanta, but we fell in love with Auburn, um, Alabama, which is where we live now in the meantime anyway. And so the opportunity presented itself and, you know, you, you can't take something like that lightly because not, you know, a girl from New Jersey, I never really envisioned myself living in Alabama, you know what I mean, for, for any long period of time. So, and I knew though, that if I committed to becoming a partner, I'd probably be here long-term, but because I really believe in the Aspen model and I really enjoy what I'm doing with Aspen, I was okay making that kind of commitment. So, um, so then in March of 2018 is when I became a partner, um, and it doesn't have to be this really long turnaround. It doesn't have to be like you work for 15, 20 years and then you eventually buy in. It can be something that turns around, you know, some people it turns around as quickly as a year or two, others, you know, it could take longer. It just really depends on what your drive is like and kind of what your own career goals are like. Awesome, thank you, doctor. Um, I wanna shift gears a little bit here to, um, let, let's dive into your everyday. Um, so 
let's let's take a step back here. When you started, um, what did what did that look like? Were you able to create your own treatment plan? Um, this is a question that always comes up when I speak to many of my students um, regarding clinical autonomy. Um, what what range of support did you get from a clinical autonomy standpoint? Were you able to go in day one and do your own treatment plans? How did that look on your end, doctor? Yep. So in the beginning, our practice was just opening when I started. So a lot of it was seeing new patients and coming up with treatment plans and then later doing the production. Um, but yeah, it's a hundred percent clinical autonomy. You know, no one is telling me like, Hey, like that really should have been a crown or really you treatment plan that as, you know, a filling or whatever. No, they know at Aspen that this is your license and they respect it. If you need the help and you're wondering, Hey, should I have treatment plan that as a four surface filling or should I have done a crown? There are people to ask and you can, you have the resources to get more information, but no one is going to be looking at your treatment plans, you know, all day micromanaging you from afar saying, oh, I saw that you treatment plan X and it should have been Y. No one's telling you that. Again, they really respect your license and they know it's your license to lose. So they're not trying to do anything to compromise that. Um, so again, I've always come up with my own treatment plans if I've ever needed help because I don't know exactly how to treatment plan in the beginning. I always had my mentor to ask but no one was ever telling me how to treat plan. Absolutely not. And I think that's a really big misconception that people are telling you that, and no, that does not happen at all. Great, thank you, doctor. Um, like I always say, and I hear from doctors all around, um, you can put six different doc, you can put three different doctors in a room and you'll get six different treatment plans. <laughs> um, so it, it's great that you had that freedom and you had that clinical autonomy from day one. Um, that, that's awesome. And, and I know that's something that, all of the students are interested in is when I start, what does that look like, right? Like when, when I begin my professional career and I'm, I'm licensed and this is me, right? This is me treating the patients. Do I have the final say? So it's great that um, you kind of went over that and how that looked like for you. Um, let's kind of dive into, you, you mentioned being an MCD, being a managing clinical director of your practice, of the practice. Um, what, what, what exactly is that, right? Like you, there's an associate, right? You can come in as an associate when you first start right out of dental school, um, you'll work a one column schedule. Um, and then there is growth opportunities everywhere, right? So you can become a MCD, which is a managing clinical director, which is a lead dentist. What does that look like? Um, if you can kind of go and just give like a brief overview on what the scheduling looks like, um, the leadership in the office, et cetera. So um, as an MCD, you're going to be managing um, a few more columns. You're going to be seeing a column of new patients. You're going to be seeing a column of production. And then you'll see a column of overflow patients. So overflow entails, you know, various denture steps. It could just be a, a limited um, no charge or no charge exam, um, something that's not going to be taking too much time out of your day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's learning how to better prioritize your time. It's learning how to juggle multiple columns. You know, of course, in dental school, you're usually seeing only one patient at a time and you have, you know, three hours to do that. And so, of course, you know, and, you know, many students know that that's not necessarily a realistic schedule once you get out into the real world. So what an MCD allows you to do is learn how to juggle those multiple columns and learn how to split your time appropriately. Um, and you'll also be, like Miles said, a leader in the office. So you're going to, um, you know, you're not going to be doing payroll or approving vacation or anything like that, but the staff is going to look up to you to help kind of guide, guide, guide the ship here. So, you know, you need to kind of set the, the tone of the office because they are really looking to you to how the office is run. Um, and so you really get to take on, um, Two different roles. You're not only the dentist, but you're looked at as the leader in the practice. So it's a, it's really cool to have both those roles. Thank you, doctor. Um, it's great that you just gave us an overview on what that managing clinical director um, looks like because it's like a long title and it's sometimes confusing to some of the students. So like I like to say lead dentist, um, but like you said, they absolutely take on a bigger role. Um, than an associate, um, because like you said, the leadership, the more columns, et cetera, um, you're working a little bit more of a 
a, a heavier workload. So um, we just got a great question that came in um, regarding the ownership or partnership for multiple Aspen Dental offices. What is that protocol? Like, what does that look like? Um, how did you go about that owning, I mean, or, or being a partner of multiple offices? Yep. So it, there's so many different ways you can become an owner. You can be the sole owner of the practice um, and not have any partners, or you can be a partner like I am where there is a majority owner and then I'm the minority owner. So there's pros and cons with both models. Some people don't want to have um, a partner because they just want to kind of do it all themselves and they don't want to have to worry about juggling someone else's kind of expectations or desires. And then in the case of my partner, um, and we, we, we enjoy that, you know, because we, we get along really well. And so we're able to kind of work in tandem together on how we believe these practices should run. So while she is the majority owner, so she'll get kind of more of the final say, I get to weigh in on certain things. Um, and there's, you know, shared risk and shared benefits. So if you're going to be the primary owner of a practice, you're going to be, you know, assuming all of the risks, but then you assume all of the benefits as well. As partner, I get to share the risk. So if I'm kind of, you know, confused on how we want to proceed, I can always ask her and we kind of bounce ideas off of each other and we kind of share any of those risks. But then of course the reward is shared also. So it's really kind of um, what's important to you um, in terms of, do you want to work with someone essentially you're kind of married to someone else. So you have to really get along with this person if you want to become a partner with them. Um, or do you want to kind of just do it by yourself? And either way it works. Um, it's just kind of whatever works best for you personally. Great. Thank you, doctor. Um, I want to kind of stay on that topic a little bit. And let's, let's, let's take a little bit of a rewind to when you were in dental school. Um, and let's make it a little bit relatable to the dental students here, because I know that um, that is a question on their mind, and that's a thought on their mind um, all the time regarding ownership and partnership, et cetera. Um, what was your view on that when you were in dental school? Um, did you want to jump into ownership? Did you want to jump into partnership right away? Um, did you Were you set on one or the other? Like, what did that look like for you, and what was your thought process on ownership and partnership? So honestly, in dental school, um, I didn't want to be an owner at all. I kind of just wanted to roll into work, do my thing, and then leave and go home and like watch Netflix. And so I was like, I'm not really, you know, keen on doing anything. Like if, if the toilet bowl breaks, like I don't want to have to be responsible for that. Like I'm not, I don't want to be dealing with that. So me becoming a partner was actually like surprised me the most because I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. But the reason why is because it, it's just so easy with asking. I don't really do too much more as a partner than I would be doing as an MCD because we have the management side that takes care of everything. So yeah, if the toilet bowl is broken, I still ain't fixing it because I'm gonna call Aspen and they're gonna send someone out to fix it. You know what I mean? So there's, I'm not doing anything necessarily more as a partner um, than I would as a regular dentist, but I'm getting a lot more benefit from being a partner. So. Um, yeah, it was kind of the furthest thing from my mind because that just wasn't necessarily a goal of mine, but the opportunity presented itself. And since, again, I didn't have to assume a lot more responsibility, but I got a lot more reward, it kind of was a no-brainer. So it worked out well for, for me. That's great. I, I love the toilet bowl example. Um, <laughs> and for the, for the students that kind of joined a little bit later, um, like I said, I work for Aspen Dental Management. We are the management support organization that supports Dr. Shaw and her locations. So if the toilet breaks, she can call us and you know we'll, we'll have her back and we'll get it fixed. Um, everything that goes into that and um, operations, um, marketing, payroll, finances, real estate, um, we're, we're your backbone, right? We're your backbone, we're your built-in consultant when you're a partner. Um, and it's easy, like you said, it's easy. You can focus on dentistry. Like you said, it, it'll be pretty much the same as if you were um, an MCD in your office, helping patients and being, being the leader of that office. So it's great that you're able to kind of give your insight. And, and I love that you gave an example um, of, you know, what a partner looks like and, and um, what, how, how Aspen Dental Management on your side helps you and, and is beneficial. So thank you, doctor, for that. Um, I want to jump into this topic regarding work-life balance. Um, 
this is this is a great topic for you, um, especially right. Like you, you know, you just had a baby. Um, you're you're a partner. Um, you you have your personal life, and then you have your professional career, right? Um, what does work work life balance look like for you? Because I know that being a mom is super super busy. Being a full time dentist and a partner is super super busy as well. Like they say, you have two full time jobs, right? You have a job um, in the office and you have a job at home. Um, and on to sprinkle on top of that, you are a partner. So. What does your work-life balance look like? I know that it is very, very important to a lot of the students. They don't want to be, you know, worked into the ground and they want to have a, a, um, perf a, um, a, career, a career and a um, personal life as well and a family. So what does that look like on your end, doctor? Yep, so um, great question. So every office is going to be different in terms of their hours and that's just going to be, you know, there's no set hours for all the Aspen practices. But in terms of work-life balance, you know, I'm going to be honest, you're going to work hard. You, you didn't become a dentist to just sit and work for an hour a day. So I'm not going to tell you like, oh yeah, you know, like we, we barely do anything. We're just kind of kick back, like, you know, drinking margaritas in the break room. Like we're not doing that. We're working hard and you're going to put in the time, but that's what you've signed up to do. There's a lot of work to be done and Aspen attracts a lot of patients that need a lot of work. And so you're going to be kept busy and that's a good thing. So um, you're going to work hard, but, you know, because of that, you are going to be compensated accordingly. So for people who, you know, that might be on the forefront of their mind, depending on loans that they have to pay and things like that, that's something that, you know, you really want to keep in mind that you're going to put in the work, but you're going to be rewarded for it accordingly. Um, and then in terms of, you know, having time for your personal life, yeah, you're going to work hard, but, you know, in our practice, for example, we work half day Fridays. So um, we have like a little bit of an extended weekend. We used to work Saturdays. Um, we stopped, not every Saturday, just one Saturday a month, um, but we stopped doing that. And so, you know, and we might pick back up on it, you know, just, just to kind of see how things go. But it's not one of those things. Um, I know in New Jersey, it was like, oh, you're an associate. Well, you're going to work every Saturday then. And you're like, oh, God, you know, and like you got to pay your dues because you're the you're the newbie. Right. So it's not like that necessarily. You're going to have um, more of a more of a semblance of a, of a life on the weekends. Um, some offices, they'll split their hours and a doctor will come in in the morning and then they'll stagger their schedule and another doctor will come in in more later on in the afternoon and work a couple hours after but you're not working, you know, routinely at like eight, nine o'clock at night. You know, you're just doing, you know, the normal hours, you're going to work hard. But like I said, um, most offices do a, like a half day Friday. Um, some do maybe one Saturday a month, but for the most part, you're, you're enjoying your weekends and, you know, you have a, you have a good balance. I was able to take 12 weeks off um, for my maternity leave. And, you know, no one was saying like, no, you really should only take like two weeks. They said, yeah, go for it. Enjoy it. You know? And so, I'm, I'm more than pleased with, uh, you know, the balance that I have. Thank you, doctor, um, for sharing that with us. Um, I want to ask you a question that is on the mind of all of the students. Um, and without going into numbers at all, um, just to kind of touch the surface and give us a brief overview on what compensation looks like at Aspen Dental, um, as in MCD, right? Um, what does that look like? Um, like I said, without going into numbers, um, just what does the compensation plan um, look like from the daily rate to the profit sharing plan? If you wanna kind of touch upon that and how that works and how that led you to making your decision. Sure. <clears throat> so I know, um, and I, I know I keep referring back to private practice, but you know, when we were graduating residency, everyone kept talking like, oh, are, are they percent collections or, percent um, production or whatever. And, you know, they, they always talk about that. And I was like, oh, no, that's like a lot of numbers and a lot of calculations and all that. And so the hard thing about that is it all depends on what you're doing. So if you're doing, you know, slinging profies all day long, you're probably not going home with a ton that, that week or that, you know, every two weeks. And that's tough. The profies have to be done, but you might not be getting what you were expecting to then pay off any expenses that you need to pay. So I personally don't like the fact that the paycheck can fluctuate so much because I want to have that consistency. I want to know that I can put X amount towards, you know, A, B, and C every two weeks or whatever the case might be. 
So with Aspen, how the pay structure is, is you will get a daily rate and that will be determined with you once you sign a letter of agreement, but you'll get a daily rate um, regardless. You don't owe back that daily rate if you didn't produce enough that day. No one's going to say, hey, we're going to cut it out of your next paycheck. And I think that that's a big thing because certain companies will do that. They'll say, well, if you didn't produce enough to cover your daily rate, we're going to take it out of your next paycheck. And that, you know, that kind of sucks because you don't always control that. You don't control who comes in and what your procedures are. So that's nice. It's kind of, you know, one less thing you have to worry about. You're still going to always get your daily rate. Then in terms of the profit share, anything um, at the end of the month, they will um, tally kind of all the numbers and see how you did. And once they deduct all the expenses from the office, if there's anything over, then you'll get a certain percentage of that based on the satisfaction of your patients. So what that means is if you have X amount of dollars, you know, to split amongst the doctors, how much of that you get depends on how well you treat your patients. And I think that that's a huge thing because this isn't, this isn't a factory. This isn't like, let's get them in and out. And we don't really care about people's feelings. We're just here to kind of drill, fill, build. That's not the case. Like these people are, um, are humans. You have to respect them and how they feel being in your office and leaving your office is, is huge. And you need to be able to sleep at night um, knowing that you're treating these patients well. And that's going to be reflected in how they kind of review you. And so Aspen will send out surveys that are anonymous and they can kind of tell you how their experience was in the office. And based on how your cumulative review is, you'll get a percentage of profits based on that. So it kind of is a good reminder um, to treat people well, which should be just a normal tenant in people's lives. But sometimes I guess people forget. So, um, but yeah, that's how the profit share process works is based on patient satisfaction. So you're uh, not only doing good clinical work, but you're treating people well, um, and that all ties into how you're compensated. But the good thing, you know, long story short, the good thing about it is that you're always going to get a consistent paycheck, um, which I think is really important, especially in the beginning, if you're trying to pay off loans, you want to make sure that you can do that and pay for your housing and, you know, food and all that stuff. So I think that's really important that you know what you can expect every two weeks. Great, thank you, doctor. I mean, I I don't think I could have explained the compensation structure any better than you did. Um, and I also really, really like that you mentioned the customer satisfaction score. Like I, I really appreciate you mentioning that because that is something that is extremely important. Um, like you said, we wanna ensure that we treat our patients to the best ability. Um, and we are providing a comprehensive treatment plan and we are um, doing right and best and ethical by the patient. And that's something that has been a negative perception for years that, you know, we, we kind of over treat or we don't treat our patient or we just try to get them in and, in and out in like a revolving door. But like you said, you want to make sure that you can go to sleep at night and you gave that patient the best care and the best treatment possible um, and like you said, again, they have a, um, a survey that when they, after they visit the office, they can go and fill out, like, how was Dr. Shaw today? And, you know, how, how did you enjoy, enjoy her treatment and everything that goes into that and giving you a score? And that's pretty much, you know, that, that is kind of a portion on how you get paid. So I, I like that you did mention that. And that is a very, very important um, point to drive home. Um, I also want to touch upon something else that you mentioned regarding the letter of agreement. Um, one of the biggest um, kind of um, perceptions is that we have contracts, right? And I know that a lot of private practices, they have contracts. And um, I know everywhere is different regarding private and DSO and um, everything that goes into that. So what is a letter of agreement? What, what did it when, when you, before you signed um, and you went through it, what does that pretty much entail um, on? And what is the difference between a letter of agreement and a contract? If you can want to dive into that a little bit, doctor. Sure. So a letter of agreement is just going to be reviewing the compensation that was discussed, the um, location of where you're working, the hours. Um, what it doesn't do is it doesn't bind you into anything. There's no... Um, you know, restrict, uh, restrictions, no um, restricted covenant, nothing like that. You know, if you decide that 
this isn't the place for you, okay, you are free to give your notice and leave. You can decide to work next door if you want. You know, they're, they're not putting anything um, binding. They're not, you know, limiting you from where geographically um, you can work, which is a lot different than a contract with private practices that are going to limit kind of where you can then work um, upon, you know, you're leaving their practice. So again, there are no limitations. Um, and so it, it's kind of very flexible. You know, you have the freedom to, to stay or go if you wish, um, and you don't have to worry about limiting yourself career-wise geographically because of that. Great, thank you, doctor. Um, I, I really, really appreciate you mentioning that. Um, what, what is the difference between a, a contract and a letter of agreement? Because we work a little bit different here at Aspen Dental. Um, and like you said, no restrictive covenant, covenants, no non-competes, et cetera. So thank you for kind of diving into that and explaining it. Um, wanna stay on that topic a little bit um, and then we can shift gears a little bit after this question. Um, are there any production goals? Um, this is something that you might hear all the time. I might hear all the time from all of my students. Um, you might've heard it when you were a student, right? When you, before you signed with us and like you said, you heard a lot of things that were out there. I um, mean, then you started and it was a completely different kind of atmosphere. So are there any production goals and um, what does that look like at all? You know, if you kind of want to dive into, you know, your treatment and um, helping patients. Sure. So there are no set production goals saying like, all right, today you must do 10 fillings and, you know, five pounds. No one is telling you anything. They're, like we were talking about before, you have complete clinical autonomy. So for me, for example, when I first started, I said, hey, you know what? I can't do this crown in this amount of time, I want this much time to do. And they were like, okay. And so they scheduled me for a little bit longer. And then as I got more comfortable, I said, all right, you can shorten the time a little bit. Or if I know that, you know, it's a tooth that's going to need a lot, a little bit more time, they're not, no one is going to tell me like, oh no, sorry, you only get an hour. They're going to be like, all right, how much time you need? No one, no one cares. They, they want you to be in a position to do what you need to do the best way you can. So they're not going to limit you that way. So in terms of scheduling, what you want to, uh, what you want to schedule and when, if you want to do a quadrant of fillings that day, great. If you say, you know what, these fillings are going to be pretty big. I should probably only do two, do two, you know, and it doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, you want to do treatment for the patient. You know, the patient doesn't want to have to come back a hundred times to get, you know, everything done. So you're trying to do as much as you can in a visit because you're trying to respect the patient's schedule and that they have to take off work every time um, to do this. And unlike dental school, you're trying to get them, you know, a denture within a couple of weeks, not like six months. So, um, you know, you're going to try to do as much as you can to respect the patient's schedule, but it's all up to you. If you're really not feeling it that day and you decide, look, I'm just going to do knock out this one occlusal because I'm really tired or whatever. Okay just do this one occlusal filling and call it a day. No one, um, no one's going to be telling you what to do. So you have complete flexibility in terms of how long you want a procedure to be, what procedures you're willing to do and what procedures you don't want to do. You know, everyone's going to always encourage you to do all the procedures you can. But if you say, look, I really don't feel comfortable doing molar endo. Okay. Don't do molar endo. I don't do any endo in the practice and no one cares. So I choose to refer them out. And if there's, um, some practices have an endodontist who come into practice and you can refer to them. Um, and my partner, luckily, she doesn't like to do endo either. So she doesn't mind that I refer him out. So, you know, no one's forcing you, um, oh, do you do molar endo? No, because I don't want to do molar endo, so I don't do it. All right, cool. Thank you, doctor, for that. Um, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, you're currently in your office, right? As of now, as we speak live, you are <laughs> in the office. Um, so, what does that look like? What does you in the office look like regarding COVID, right? Helping, helping patients. We are currently still in the middle of a pandemic and um, the way you treat patients is a little bit different. Like there's more precautions now than ever, I would say. So what are some of the precautions that you take in your office um, when it comes to treating patients and how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel safe? Um, is there anything that you, you might you know, want to work on in your office regarding COVID. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. So, um, you know, being a dentist, you know, people's 
dental problems continue regardless of whether there's a pandemic or not. So we can't just completely shut down. We got to help help these patients out. So um, the biggest change is kind of the the PPE. You know, we're wearing multiple masks and, or different masks, um, multiple gowns. Um, so it's taken maybe a little bit longer to get prepped before before a particular procedure because you're not accustomed to having to wear so many gowns um, and all of that. Um, but the treatment is still the same. Um, it's just a matter of being a little bit more cautious about changing out gowns or you know more hand washing and all of that. But you know it hasn't it hasn't dramatically changed our lives too much. Um, and I feel you know actually probably safer than I've ever felt before because before I used to never wear a face shield, um, you know, in dental school. Um, and for the first five years, I never wore a face shield. And I knew that obviously that there was a lot of aerosol going on in the air. Everyone can see it and you know, it's there, but it wasn't the norm to wear a face shield. But now that I wear a face shield, I see all of the disgusting stuff that I guess was uh, before I go in, in this poof. So now I'm like, oh God, I'm gonna wear this face shield forever um, because I don't want all that stuff going in my face. So yeah, if anything, you know, I'm probably safer now than I ever was before. So we're making it work. That's great. And, and I know um, it's, it feels kind of good to take a break from it, right? For, for an hour at least. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, well, I have to wear my mask on the Zoom call. I was like, wait, no, I'm by myself. <laughs> um, it would have been very authentic. Um, but <laughs> It's, it's good that you were able to take it off and you're in the comfort of your own office and um, you're comfortable. So, so that's awesome. Thank you for that, doctor. We have a question that came in regarding clinical procedures. I'm trying to see if I can understand it correctly. Um, it says, I know that certain clinical procedure steps are done differently in a private practice. In dental school, there are more steps for pros. When do we learn the way of Aspen? Should we choose to work there? Um, so if, if you can kind of... Um, touch base on that question to your best ability and see if, if you can kind of dive into that a little bit, doctor, from your personal experience. Yeah, absolutely. So um, great question. So I want to preface it with, you will do dentures and cross the way you want to do it. There's not an Aspen way. Aspen can tell you like, hey, you know, after years and years and years, we've come up with a method that seems to work. But at the end of the day, you have the freedom to do dentures the way you want to do. You know that at Aspen practices, dentures are a big part of the practice. So I hated dentures in dental school. And I was like, I will never do another denture again um, in my life. And then I came to Aspen and all we do is dentures. But so, so first off, you get to do dentures the way you want to do. So if you want to do a face bow transfer, um, you're more than welcome. Uh, that's not something we we do, but if you wanna do it and that's important to you, absolutely go for it. Um, you are not gonna be doing, you're not gonna be setting up teeth, you're not gonna be um, you know, doing a lot of things that you had to do in dental school. So um, what's nice about asking is when you first join, you're gonna be either working as an associate, so a lead dentist is gonna help kind of guide you through you're going to go through a training program um, for four weeks where when you first join, it's not like you're thrown in and you have a column of patients and you're like, wait, what? You know, you're going to have a four week program called the doctor development program that um, you will do first. And you're going to be working under a doctor who's been trained as a mentor. And it might not be in the same office that you're going to work at, but in a local office where they have a mentor um, and you're going to work and shadow essentially that dentist for four weeks. After maybe the first week of the program, you'll start doing some of the procedures, but you'll always have that dentist there to be like, oh, like, how am I supposed to do this? Or what would you recommend? So it's nice that you're not completely thrown at the fire first day in. And then Aspen also has um, a program. Now things are a little bit different with COVID, but when I was there, it was a program for a week. It was kind of like a one week boot camp. We went up to um, one of the Aspen headquarters and they'll go through treatment planning, cross, restorative, and you go through like all these case studies and they're, they're kind of helping you treatment plan. So it's kind of like, like a residency program in a week where um, not only do you get to meet colleagues who you would have never met otherwise, but you're kind of like, hey, I'm a few months into this asking thing. I'm sort of kind of getting a, getting a handle on how things work and the kinds of patients I'm seeing. And now these are the questions I have after having work because you probably end up having more questions once you've started and you're starting to learn. And so this gives you an opportunity to, 
to really learn. So there they'll discuss the prospects with you. Um, but again, at the end of the day, you do what you want to do, but there's always going to be someone to teach you kind of how a lot of the practices go about it. Great. Thank you, doctor. I, I, I love that you mentioned the doctor development plan. And I, I think doctor development program, um, I think that is really, really important point to drive um, because that is something that we do offer to all of our doctors that start with us. Um, the acclimate to Aspen, like you mentioned, and the beyond the chair as well. So um, when it comes to mentorship, this kind of ties back to the question regarding mentorship. Um, we want to make sure that we, we cater to your needs, right? Whatever you need, we're here. Um, if it come, if whether it's for specific procedures, whether it's shadowing, whether it's ideas from um, another, um, an, another doctor in your office, like you said, when you're an associate, you have that MCD as your backbone. Um, so it, it's great that you mentioned that doctor. And um, I want to ask you this question that I, I think is on, that is a great question, by the way. Um, thank you for for asking that question. Um, I wanna dive into um, the question regarding the GPR and the, and the residency route. Um, we are in a very unique time now. And I know, I specifically know um, dental schools that are kind, aren't really doing the traditional clinic when you're a D4 as of now because of the pandemic. Um, obviously when you graduated, it was a little bit different. You, you were able to get that full experience. Um, so, just talking with all the students, I, I just realized that it's kind of been split down the middle regarding doing a GPR and um, going right into work. What would be your best piece of advice for a D4 student now that kind of on the fence, whether um, they want to go to GPR route or they want to jump right into work? Um, I really think it's personal preference. So up in New Jersey, where I went to school, basically everyone did some sort of residency, whether it was a specialty residency or a GPR, like very few people went straight to work. But down here um, where I'm working, most people don't do a residency and they go straight to work. So I don't know if it's geographic differences or what. Um, personally, I enjoyed going to residency because I didn't necessarily feel like I knew enough graduating dental school. And again, a lot of it you're going to learn purely by experience, but I figured if there was another year that I could get in working with attendings, um, I was going to take it. So I enjoyed my time um, as a resident and it was just kind of extra experience, um, extra time for me to ask questions. But even if you don't do it, like I said, there are so many resources that Aspen has to help get you to the point you need to be because so many of these doctors don't do a residency and they do just fine. So um, the biggest thing is Aspen doesn't want you to slip through the cracks. They want you to succeed. They want you to do well. So they're going to provide you with a ton of resources between, like I said, the doctor development program, which I think is a really nice way to ease the transition. You're not just jumping straight from seeing two patients a day to, you know, how many ever. You're kind of slowly working into it and you have the ability to constantly ask someone questions, which is nice. Um, or the program where you go up to Aspen and you have that like one week boot camp, like I was mentioning, they're going to make sure you have all the resources, whether you did a residency or not. Great. That, that, that's awesome advice. Um, and it, it's great to, it's great to get it from a real life doctor, um, their insight on a residency GPR going right to work right away. Um, and it's, it's great that you're able to provide that insight and why you made your decision. Um, so I, I wanna thank you for that, doctor. Um, I wanna jump into a little bit more of a personal question. Um, we're coming up on 10 minutes here. Um, five years in, right? You, you've been five years with, with Aspen, half a decade. Um, what is your favorite part of dentistry? What do you enjoy the most, doctor? Um, the reason why so dentistry was a career change for me. I worked in business at first, and then I decided to go back to school to become a dentist. And the biggest thing I enjoy about dentistry is the, the tangible aspect of dentistry. You, you see exactly what you're doing, and you pretty much get like immediate gratification. So um, the thing I like about dentistry is that you um, are able to get a patient out of pain. You know exactly where your skill set is going towards. When I worked in business, I was just cranking spreadsheets all day long. I didn't really know what these spreadsheets were doing. We would have meetings where I feel like we were accomplishing nothing. And so here in dentistry, it's like 
you do something and an hour later you get your result and you can see it with your own eyes. So I really like um, dentistry in terms of that tangible aspect of it. Um, I really enjoy, you know, doing extraction. So I like that I'm able to do that. And I like that I get a mix of procedures, um, which is why I enjoy being a general dentist. I'm not committed to doing just kind of one procedure all the time. So I'm going to ask them again, you're going to get that variety of procedures and you can choose to focus on certain things that you like, um, but you'll definitely get um, a huge assortment. So if you're looking to learn, if you're looking to be exposed to a lot of things, um, Aspen is definitely the way to go. You'll, you'll see more things than you ever could have imagined. No, that, that, that's awesome. And, and that's one of my favorite questions because um, every doctor is different and every doctor um, strives to be the, the best doctor they can be. Um, and they all have a, a different part of dentistry that they enjoy the most. Um, dentistry is an art and not every artist is the same. Um, so it's kind of interested. It's kind of interesting to kind of dive in and, and pick your brain a little bit about why you wake up every morning and why you went the, den the, the dentistry route. You said you started in business and then you wanted to, to kind of transition to something that you really, really enjoy and you really see yourself doing um, and something that you can get an ultimate fulfillment out of. So um, thank you providing, for providing us with that insight, doctor. Um, one question I do want to ask you as well, let's take another step back here, right? Like you're in dental school, um, any year, doesn't matter, D1, D2, D3, D4. Um, I would maybe say D4 because you might have the most challenges. So what was your biggest challenge or and biggest fear when you were in dental school and how did you overcome that fear? Um, so in dental school, um, I think my biggest concern was, you know, of course you're concerned about boards and all of that, which I'm sure it was different for, for you guys this year, but, um, you know, my concern was not knowing enough because a lot of times, you know, if you don't know something, if you're like, is that really decay or is that just standing? And you're like, I don't know, you know, so you just like ask a professor and they, they tell you what to do and you're like, okay, cool. Um, but then, you know, I was concerned like, well, I need to be able to know how to do that. And so that was a concern for me. That was another reason why I thought a residency would be good to kind of just fine tune some of those skills that you learn, um, you learn in dental school. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a concern because I don't think anyone expects you to know everything, but you know, for so long you've been in a school setting, you know, high school, college, uh, dental school, and now you're free to do whatever you need to do and you got to put all those skills um, to use. And I think that that can sometimes be a little overwhelming because you don't know what you don't know. And so that was, that was important that for me, I kind of had a better grasp of things, which is why, you know, again, um, the residency was, was important to me, but then a lot of times it's all about on the job experience. You're going to learn soon enough. You are going to make mistakes, um, with whatever job you're at. You know, there's no way you're going to do hundred percent perfect dentistry. You're going to make mistakes and you'll learn the next time. You know, when you see them at recall, you'll be like, no, nope, shouldn't have done that. When you see the x-ray, I got to make sure I do it this way the next time, you know? So, um, it's all about, you know, just kind of continuously learning. So, you know, that was a fear of mine that, you know, suppose I didn't know something, but you just keep pushing yourself and keep exposing yourself to procedures that you're not always familiar with. And you just learn, learn as you go. And that's all you can do. That's awesome. Um, you, you have an amazing story, Dr. Shada, and I want to just really, really thank you for that and providing your insight. We're coming up on five minutes here. Um, so I, I want to, we're getting so many questions that are coming in. We, we got so many questions that that um, were submitted beforehand when the students were able to sign up. Um, so I'm trying to get to all those questions as much as sure. I can. Um, and I'll my answer shorter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. We, I just want to thank all the students for, for asking these, these awesome questions. Um, one question I do want to ask you about that I, I want to make sure I get to, it's, it's regarding location. Um, and I know that you did touch upon location on the beginning when you gave your story and you 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 gave you gave why you're in why you live in um, Alabama and why you know you're a partner as well. Um, how important was location to you? Because when I talk to students all of the time, location is probably the biggest the biggest necessity. It's the biggest motivational factor for them um, when they're starting their professional career. So, 
you're you're a partner in Alabama, you're a partner in Georgia, you currently live in Alabama, right? Mm -hmm. I know that you do miss Atlanta, right? I, I know that Atlanta um, is, is, is a place that you miss. Um, when you were making that decision and when you did join Aspen Dental, how important was the location factor of that? So location, of course, is going to be important. You know, I didn't want to be stuck in the middle of nowhere where you have to drive like 200 miles to get to, a, you know, a restaurant or anything like that. Most of the Aspens are going to be, you know, they might not be located in, you know, a hugely major city, but they're going to be located, you know, in the outskirts. Um, within a reasonable distance of a, of a major city. It's always going to be in a populated area. You're not going to be in the middle of like a farm somewhere, you know. So for me, yeah, was Alabama where I expect to be? Absolutely not, you know. But for me, it was kind of just a matter of I have to be in this specific geographic region. Um, and so I was willing to be there because I kind of needed a job. So um, for others, you know, if there's a particular geographic location that you really want to be in. There's likely an Aspen in that in that area. They're constantly opening new practices because it's a model that works and they're able to duplicate it really easily. Um, so, you know, you just have to kind of decide where you want to sort of set up shop. And then, um, like I said, there's typically an Aspen around there. Great, awesome. And I, I love that you, you touched upon that point. And that's a question I really wanted to sneak in there because Location is super, super important to all of the students all across the country. I know that we have a wide variety of students on this session from dental schools um, all across the country that are associated with the um, SNDA. And I just want to make sure that we touch upon that because we have a very, very diverse audience on this call. Um, so I have a student here who is interested in um, community dentistry. They're, they're interested in community outreach and giving back to their community. Um, their interest, they, they want to know if Aspen Dental has any outreach programs or dental offices that target servicing health profession shortage areas or patients with low income. Um, if you are, if that relates to you in your office or your offices, um, you feel free to, to kind of give um, the best answer you can on that, or we can kind of cater that question regarding um, your, your patient demographic and what that looks like. And if you um, check out every, every day out of the office and you feel like you're giving back to your community. Yeah, sure. So um, in general, Aspen has a lot of community outreach um, programs. You know, every year they're going to um, different countries to do service trips. Um, they also have something called the Mouth Mobile where they will travel around um you know certain certain cities and people are it's sort of just like a walk-in where you come in you get you know a certain procedure done if the tooth is really hurting you can get that tooth extracted um, they have each year they have a program called day of service where we give back to veterans and it's completely um, at no charge to the patient and it's on a saturday um, so they're always looking back looking to give back to the community with people who deserve the treatment the most. Um, and then in general, yeah, the a lot of the patients you're gonna see at Aspen are patients who um, might not have insurance, um, who are fearful of the dentist, haven't been to a dentist in a long time. Um, so you're catering to a population that really needs kind of just a little extra attention. Um, and so, you know, you're always going to be giving back to them because they're they're kind of in a position where they're vulnerable and they you know it took a lot of courage for them to walk through the doors, um, and so you know you're you're helping them out by making them feel comfortable, making them realize that the dentist doesn't have to be a scary place. And most importantly, you're getting them back healthy again. So um, you know every day you're going to be you know they might be small things, but they but they add up. You're really helping people out. In that in terms of that, but then also if you decide to do mission trips and um, the mouthmobile, you're you're helping out on a larger scale that way. Great, thank you, Doctor. Um, we have one minute left. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you one last question that I'm interested in. Um, I a, a student had asked it as well. I know that um, there the, everybody on this call and on this session is interested in as well. Um, so five years in, um, half a decade, you're a partner. Um, it, it, it seems like you've accomplished what you wanted to accomplish, right? Um, let's fast forward to another five years. Um, do you have any specific goals? 
Um, do you wanna, you're, you're a partner in two different states. Um, do you have any specific goals, um, maybe branching to another state, maybe staying within your um, geographic region? Um, when you wake up in the morning, you think about where you see yourself from a dentistry standpoint, from a partner standpoint in the next five years, what would you say that to be? Yeah, so the goal is always to be to be growing, um, but of course staying respectful to how much you can you can manage. So, you know, I think that if the opportunity presents itself to partner in, you know, other offices, I really enjoy being a partner. Like I said, for for me, it works. I like the kind of shared risk, shared reward. So, if the opportunity presents itself to continue to partner and to expand, I would uh, I would love to do that. And I know that that could very well be a reality, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, hey, like I bought into this one practice and that's about it with asking because new practices are always opening up and because um, there's just such a, a large network of asking practices, there's always opportunities to, to expand my ownership. And so I like having that option out there. Maybe I'll exercise it, maybe I won't, but I like that I have that option to, to do it. Right now I'm happy. Um, with where I'm at with the two. And then in the future, if I want to proceed with more, I know that that's going to be a conversation that I can easily have. So. Great. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Um, I'm going to let you go home and, and get back to your baby. Uh, I, I know that um, you, you've taken out the time to give us a, an hour, an amazing hour of your life and um, your, your professional experience, your personal experiences, um, why dentistry, um, why Aspen Dental, where you are at today, and then your, your career goals, um, you know, in the, in the next few years. So I, I just want to thank you again. Um, you were awesome. I want to thank all the students as well um, from the SNDA um, that, that are joining. I know that it's kind of a busy time um, for you guys with boards, with exams, um, finals, um, everything that goes on into your, you know, the final stretch um, of, of this semester for you guys. So I want to thank you all for attending as well. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is miles.murphy at aspendental.com. Um, my email should be when you signed up when, and you got the confirmation email, my email should be there. If you want to reach out directly to me, um, if you have any questions for, for Dr. Shah, um, please feel free to let me know as well. Um, and I can kind of relay those questions to her. Um, and I just want to thank you all again for joining. I also am giving away a free pair of um, Apple EarPods to one lucky winner, um, one lucky raffle winner as well. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and um, I really, really wanna thank everyone for joining. I wanna thank Dr. Shaw as well. And um, good luck everyone and have a great night and have a happy holidays. Miles, can I just mention one last thing? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, real quick, I just wanna, and this is what I've told other residents um, and other students, um, I encourage you guys to just give it a shot. So you might hear a lot of things in school or during your residency programs about, um, you know, DSOs and how they are. Um, I really encourage you to give it a shot yourself and make that opinion and judgment for yourself. If you don't like it, great, chalk it up to working on your hand skills and get out of there. And if it was a good experience, if you do end up liking it, well, then you can end up, you know, becoming a partner and owner or, you know, going as far as you want to go, but don't let other people's opinions or judgments, um, you know, make the decision for you. I would encourage you to, to learn for yourself what is out there and what all your options are, and then make an educated decision based on your own experiences. Thank you, doctor. That, that I, I can't um, end it a better way than you just ended. Um, and I, I do have a student that asks if I'm going to be doing the raffle tonight. Um, be on the lookout. I am going to be pulling the name um, very, very shortly. So I am. I will be emailing the student um, who is the winner. Um, I will be doing that tonight. Um, so everyone, stay tuned. Um, thank you, Dr. Shaw. Really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day, your busy schedule. I want to thank all the students again as well. And um, like I said, again, have a happy holidays. Have a great night. And everybody enjoy. Take care.